Opa! Hope everyone's doing well today. I hope everyone's doing especially well today. How well, we're going to find out. Twitch. Just want to make sure I've got everything set up here. My lab two. There we go. Hope everyone gets the sound nice and uh, nice and clear. Beautiful, beautiful. As soon as I get a confirmation that the mic is working, we're gonna dive right into it. Kitty cat, that's that's high praise. Thank you. Mike is good. Oh, we're not getting chaffles today. Today we're getting old school waffles. A waffle, waffle, a waffle. If you want chaffles, you can go to my keto section for chaffles to get all chuffled. But today we have on my lab chef, we have waffles, regular and German pancakes because we're so multicultural over here. Because Geralabos uh, Vlachos just screams uh, German, right? If anyone wants to play the home game, we have uh, the recipes today are on that link. And what else are we doing? Um, we're not loading things up with fruit. Uh, I only have a Mariah Cat. Thanks for the sub. Uh, I only have a couple of strawberries left and some frozen ones, but we're going to make a few syrups, some sauces. I'm going to go over a simple syrup recipe. I'll be doing a pancake syrup and a caramel sauce. And maybe, just maybe, maybe I'll do a like an old school caramel like a legit old school caramel. Yeah, and I've got some, normally I don't go for the uh, exotic, obscure ingredients. But today what I do have is, I just wanna make sure that the camera doesn't fall out of focus. In this cup I have, uh, now there's about a cup of heavy whipping cream in here. And if you look at the little flecks of uh, black things in there, there's a couple of vanilla beans in here. So this vanilla infused whipping cream is going to turn into some very, very happy whipping cream later. Uh, and if, as usual, as always, whenever I have whipping cream involved, I'll show you how to, uh, the easiest way to whip it up without using any weird gadgets. Uh, usually a hand mixer, sometimes a whisk. That's about it. So without further ado, I think I'm just going to quickly clean off my cast iron skillet. And I'll let all y'all pick what I'm going to start with. So we have German waffles, German pancakes, which are actually baked. And that's what I need the cast iron pan for. And then regular pancakes. And For pancakes, do you prefer a bunch of small little, like dollar sized, silver dollar sized, loony sized, or bigger pancakes, or the whole freaking plate covering? Pancakes, please let me know in the comments below what size pancakes you like. And while we're deciding, we have some firm fresh eggs. And yes, these are these are the real colors. We got brown. We got some sort of lighter brown. <laughs> we got green. We got blue. These are eggs. These are real eggs. And no, they're not dyed. It's the way they came from the non-factory farm. It is like Easter. Absolutely. The other slightly someone at the door no good the slightly other 
fake eggs. Well, commercial eggs are convenient in that they're uh, consistent. Uh, they just don't taste the same. Exactly, fake eggs don't taste as well. I do have some of the world famous of La Josian vanilla extract. Uh, I have filled this completely probably three times now. So I'm on to the 16th ounce, 16 ounces, not 16th. Uh, I don't know if you can see the, I should get a light behind this so you can see just how many little flecks of color. Does this even work? Let's find out. Can you see the uh, suspension in there? All the little, yeah. That's pure flavor. It's 100% pure flavor. And I think this year I'm going to be making uh, two dozen bottles that I'll be giving away to, uh, to loyal viewers. And that might extend to some of Shock's beautiful people as well. So uh, at some point we'll figure out a draw and we'll uh, I'll just ship some of these bottles out. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the vanilla extract is rather spectacular. And this, for anyone that wasn't following last year, it's just vodka and vanilla beans. That's how you make traditional vanilla extract. That was DJ Nuvo sneaking by. Uh, so, she, so she's going to want me to uh, edit this out in post-production. Too bad. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I was like, what, one second? <clears throat> I know. Well, you can check the replay. And uh, Shock will have... Uh, I, I need to apologize profusely for this. Episodes 8 and 9 of My Live Chef had uh, a little bit of production delay. Completely my fault. But they are available for Mr. Shock to grab and put to YouTube. And the end of the Musakas episode, there's a quick little uh, slideshow of the regular and the keto version. And the, the end result was pretty spectacular. I was, I was very happy with how both of them turned out. But I'm still waiting for what I'm making first. We have German waffles, German pancakes, and regular pancakes. So while you're deciding, I'm just going to quickly clean what up this German pan. German waffles. Yeah. Oh. German waffles, that's a great question. You know what Belgian waffles are? Yep. That's, that's a really good question. I'm waiting for somebody to ask that in the chat. Well, it would be nice if you typed it in the chat. Get some interaction going, feed the algorithm, you know, push for partner and all that. <laughs> Repeating the phrase push for partner is just going to become a nervous tick for me, so get used to it. My thought process is by the time any one of us is, uh, is actually ready to apply for partner. Um, there's an obligatory number of times that Twitch needs to hear the phrase push for partner before they acquiesce and bestow upon the lucky recipient the legendary status of partner. So I just want to get it out of the way. Push for partner. If everyone can repeat that in the chat, that'd be fantastic. Just type in in caps, push for partner. I, I think I think it's just good for everyone to get it, you know, just get it off your chest. Just shout out <laughs> from the highest mountain, push for partner. Some people think I'm kidding. Those who know me well know that I, I never kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 average of 75. There's ways around that. One of my friends who's still pushing for partner, even though he's got his purple check mark, the, the pushing for partner is very much driven by me. Um, he had over 75 average viewers for... Uh, 14 months and he just got his partner now and I'm very 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 convinced 
slightly biased, very convinced that the only reason he got partner was in, when I started uh, repeating push for a partner. Because it was within a day that he actually got partner. And just to not jinx it, I'm going to keep pushing for partner on his channel. Okay. Here we have a cast iron skillet, nice and clean. <clears throat> That's right, Mariah Cat, push for partner. Okay, so in brief, the difference between waffles and pancakes, waffles typically have more fat and they have some sort of a leavening agent. Uh, more so than regular pancakes, which is weird because pancakes are normally nice and floofy. Waffles try to floof even more. But the, the big question, the real million dollar question of the day, what's the difference in the nationalities of waffles? Like those world famous Argentinian waffles, those world famous Croatian waffles, seldom heard Belgian waffles, German waffles, the list goes on. According to mythology, long, long verbal tradition, uh, German pancakes, well, the waffles, they're uh, round or heart-shaped. And Belgian waffles are thicker and have deeper indentations. I think that's about it. So I think it's just our regional differences will include uh, different flavors, a little more sugar, a little less sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, ground up nuts, whatever. More or less vanilla extract, the list goes on. But the basic recipe of milk, eggs, flour, leavening agent, heat, butter, more butter, lots of butter, did I mention eggs and flour? It's all the same. Pretty much all the same. Lego my ego. Oh, speaking of ego, what we are doing today is we have a two by two, more traditional shaped waffle maker and my old workhorse, what's left of it, the Dash Mini Waffle slash Chuffle Maker. This is a complete workhorse. Um, Ten bucks US on Amazon or Walmart, wherever. Made in Indonesia? Yeah. Um, as soon as I bought one of these, uh, within days I, I bought a second one. Just so I could make pears and make sandwiches for my chaffles. And... Kitty cat, there's really nothing wrong with getting the just add water or just add a bit of oil, uh, like cake mixes or pancake batter and so on. If you have the staples in your kitchen, and you, you probably should, I'm going to be a little preachy here, you probably should have a bag of flour and some uh, baking powder kicking around, some sugar, some salt, some eggs, some butter, the staples. You can make all this so much cheaper and you have more control over your ingredients. And the list goes on. Um, some things that are mass produced in factory, like those cake mixes, because they get to take a lot of shortcuts, they, they being the manufacturers, they can sell a decent quality product fairly cheap. Pretty sure you can always make them cheaper yourself at home. And they might even taste better. They probably should. And since nobody's jumping at the opportunity to tell me what to make first, we're just going to start at the top of the list. Maybe the bottom of the list. Uh, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll make the syrups first. Maybe I should. We're going to start off with some pancake syrup. Yeah, let's get the, the syrups out of the way first. 
Uh, I do have a few videos linked from my blog and on my channel. Uh, how to make your own homemade caramel. It's really easy. It's only a touch dangerous just because you're you're caramelizing sugar. I think that's where the word caramel comes from when you caramelize the sugar. Uh, the basic pancake syrup you can caramelize first and then turn it into a syrup which becomes more of a caramel syrup but this one it's just uh, some brown sugar, some water, some butter, some vanilla extract, add heat, whisk it up, you're done. try to be a little more volume conscious, conscientious, of opening and closing and slamming the cupboards. I am going to, first of all, go over brown sugar because you should never waste money buying brown sugar. Not when this stuff exists. Box of molasses because Real sugar minus molasses equals white sugar. And by the mathematical powers of transitivity and properties too, molasses plus white sugar equals brown sugar. So what we do is we take a cup of white sugar, a tablespoon of molasses, we uh, mix it together very well and it magically turns into brown sugar. I think I'm gonna make a full half cup of brown sugar, a full half. Now, it's not to say that the brown sugar is better when you make it yourself. So you're just recombining the original sugar ingredients. Uh, it's just a lot more convenient because when you have brown sugar in a bag or a box or a tub however you normally buy your brown sugar I don't know it's been so long for me it tends to dry out and then you have to worry about putting like orange peels or pieces of bread or apple chunks or something into your baggie or your container of brown sugar to keep it somewhat hydrated somewhat moist otherwise it'll just turn into a solid block of sugar and then you have to break out a, a hammer and chisel that's really not an exaggeration uh, to break your pieces apart and it's just a pain in the butt to work with oh and speaking of spring yeah it's things are starting to melt outside our, our snow hills are going to be around for months just because they're rather gargantuan this year but we're above a freezing temperature right now it's rather nice outside which is not good for anyone's joints I need half a cup of sugar, a bowl, and a tablespoon of molasses. You know what? I might just do this in my blender. It's probably faster. Do you want me to do this in a blender or with a hand mixer? Blender. Blender. All roads lead to Rome, or in my case, Athens. Before I turn on the blendomatic, I will turn off the volume just because I don't want to be super obnoxious with the noise today. And speaking of not being super obnoxious with the noise, the start of last last stream, second last stream, the music was great and then something weird happened. I'm still monkeying around with it. I'm actually tempted to add a music track to the, the YouTube video. I don't even know if it's... Uh, relevant but I'll ask Mr. Shock if he wants me to do that. So first things first we need half a cup of sugar, Oof, one half cup, and I need half a tablespoon of molasses. And again for anyone playing the home game Each cup of white sugar gets one tablespoon of molasses. And the problem with using half a tablespoon is it's one and a half teaspoons. 
And most measuring spoon rings do not have a half tablespoon, which is kind of annoying. I don't know if I've ever even seen one. I know I know they exist, but I don't own one. I know you can get them on the commercial rings, but not the I don't think the residential rings ever. There's always some crossover. Okay, so I'm just going to measure this off to the side. Hopefully not make a gigantic mess. This stuff is incredibly thick, so once it starts pouring, tilt it back and uh, measure this out in a very, very slow controlled fashion. And I want one and a half of these teaspoons. There is one teaspoon. Ooh, and then I need a half teaspoon. I'm just going to eyeball this. We've had snow into May. end of May, maybe close to July. What you really need is when we see the giant snow hills uh, that are covered in dirt into uh, late summer. So it'll be like 100 Fahrenheit outside and there's this giant snow hill. I mean, it looks like dirt, but there's a, a many, many thousands of tons of snow underneath the dirt. So it's kind of neat stuff. And a little terrifying. Okay. The one downside to dealing with molasses, and I'll just show you this, hopefully it's not too, too blurry. Is that it's very sticky. It's very messy. So I'm just scraping off whatever I can. Hopefully it all lands in the sugar. Close enough. And now I'm going to turn off the sound. I had to mix up the bottom of the blender. I'm going to unplug this for a second. I want to make sure that there is nothing sticky stuck on the bottom. It's unplugged, so this isn't going to turn on and cause grievous bodily harm to myself or anyone in the area. I was using the bottom of the wooden spoon to dislodge any of the uh, molasses that was stuck underneath the, the beaters. I'm going to mutify this, mix it a little more, and then we're brown sugar if there is a few clumps it's not a problem it will yeah like there's a little clump on the bottom 
It's not a problem. This is going to be dissolving in water anyways. If I wanted this to be darker, I just doubled the uh, amount of molasses. I could whisk this up a little better. Um, it's more than good enough. But you can see it's brown sugar. Yeah, you're right. It's more blonde. That's true. And then someone's going to crack a joke about gentlemen's preferring blonde. And gentlemen's? Gentlemen. Gentlemen's preferring blonde, and then no one's going to get the reference unless they're super old. And then I'm going to feel silly for totally dating myself. And the self narration is always hilarious. Uh, I mean, truly hilarious. I need a quarter cup of water, quarter cup of butter, and then some vanilla extract or other flavor extract. And this is a very, very versatile recipe. Um, if you want to go kind of berserk with the flavors, Make a simple syrup, which is just white sugar and water, even parts. Heat it up, let it reduce, just keep stirring till it thickens up. Let it cool down a bit, and then you can throw in zest of whatever uh, citrus you want, or bitters if you're a mixologist. And then you can add whatever extracts you want, or fruit purees, or uh, chunks of fruit that you're going to mash in. Um, flavor extracts are usually the way to go but you can take anything like this like raspberry pineapple mango the list goes on cherry root beer amaretto and make your own syrup out of it or with it so one quarter cup of the water I'm going to measure out one quarter cup of butter. I'm going to put this on low heat and just slowly let everything get incorporated. You do not want to skimp on the butter. Ah, great question that nobody's asked yet. Do we use salted or unsalted butter? Salted. Salt is always better. <laughs> and the next awesome question that no one's asked yet for some reason, actually maybe they have, let's check. What is the uh, effective difference between salted and unsalted butter? Uh, salt. <laughs> salted butter has a longer stable shelf life adds a few months and otherwise there isn't a standard amount of salt per cup of unsalted butter when you make salted butter it ranges anywhere from a quarter teaspoon per cup to three quarters of a teaspoon per cup if you want complete control of your own baking and everything else you can you can just stick with salted uh, unsalted butter and add your own salt but here's our syrup. We have sugar, brown sugar, water, and butter. This is going on medium low heat. I have my handy dandy whisk. Huh? You'll be putting in your notice soon. Sweet. I hope that's a, that's a positive. Oh no. Oh Mariah Cat, I just read that. Um. Yikes. I'm very conflicted here. There's a very happy and a very sad thing in the chat on the same page. Well, Mariah Cat, if it's any consolation, pharmaceuticals have come a heck of a lot. Uh, they've come a heck of a long way, and there might be reasons other than salt for the kidney um, totally anecdotally there was a greek fellow that i know you know being greek and he ate uh, probably far too many eggs each day he would have a 
couple of bowls of eggs like this a day. He would eat, I think, two dozen eggs per day, give or take. One to two dozen was normal for him. And uh, he developed some sort of kidney damage. Now, the two might not be related. But uh, I don't remember him going crazy on the salt. There's always genetic things, too. And it's really, really, really hard to uh, pinpoint the, the root causes for medical conditions just because of all the factors. I mean, genetics is probably going to play a part. Yeah, Virginia Slims, that's right. Genetics is going to play a big part. Uh, environment's going to play a big part. Just whatever's in the water, whatever the uh, conspiracy men and black organization is putting in your water, beaming directly into your head through TV, 5G, whatever the conspiracy theory of the week is. I'm not denying any. I'm not claiming any. <laughs> Just saying it's out there. I want to believe. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many reasons for everything. That's why we need a lot more twins for a lot of uh, unethical twins studies. Do you know how hampered we are for medical research because of ethics? <laughs> Forget I said that. So over here, uh, I'm not going to turn the camera just yet. I'm just slowly whisking this together. The butter's melting. Yeah, I don't know about the cloning either. That's man, the ethics there are terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. So while this is heating up, I'm going to mute the microphone for just a minute and I will be back. I need to blow my nose. And we're back. This isn't particularly interesting or exciting. I'm just going to keep whisking in the, the butter till I get a nice, beautiful caramel brown looking syrup. And this is almost ready to go. This will need to be shook up prior to uh, serving or dispensing. This syrup bottles like this, little squeeze bottles, it's a fantastic reason to buy a few of these. I got these for like a buck on Amazon. Um, yeah, like you can make a lot more than just your little half batch. Let it cool down a bit, pour it into one of these. I, I always recommend against pouring hot liquids into uh, squeeze bottles just because I don't like... Uh, the chance of like bad PBAs or whatever bad class five, whatever the, the bad plastics are. Uh, I'm not going to go into it, but plastics, when you heat them up, can release bad things. Some plastics, I'd rather just err on the side of caution. I'm not trying to live forever. Uh, I hope I don't. 
I'm also not rushing to uh, not be living forever. I'm going to need to take a spoon of this to the studio audience because I'm not eating anything from today. So someone has to be my uh, test victim. It's barely coating the spoon. This is a very runny syrup, but it should be buttery. sweet no. okay so apparently this is uh, not too sweet it's gonna be buttery uh, might need a pinch of salt um, a, very tiny pinch. a very tiny pinch or I can just ignore it and as far as the temperature goes that was on medium low so three ish on the temperatureometer going from 1 to 10. Just a pinch of salt it goes a heck of a long way. I could add a splash of vanilla to this, which I will, just because vanilla is so wicked awesome. So it's, the container is not too hot to the touch. Plunk this down. I'm just going to throw in a little splash of vanilla. Something around a third of a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. It smells so good. So this is a nice thin pancake style syrup. When I put this into the fridge, it's going to thicken up a little bit. So right now is the perfect temperature for pouring. I could put this in some sort of a, a gravy boat and serve it fresh, but the thicker syrup I think is generally preferred. Pours nicely. We have 175 mils, give or take, so just over half a cup. Nice. Seems right. Oh, oh, vanilla. oh, vanilla. If I shake this up really well before I throw it in the fridge, it's a little warm. Um, I'm not too worried about this stuff leaching out. Besides, I'm not drinking it or eating any of it. I have some salad dressing in squeeze ball, and I have a few other squeeze balls in the fridge. What can you even have in here? I have a simple syrup, and I have uh, a balsamic and olive oil, salad dressing handy. I should probably use these at some point, but not today. <laughs> ah, kitty cat, I know what they are. I have a good idea of what they are. It's only the two of us, so. DJ Nouveau knows um, she plays with things in the fridge. It's at her own risk. And I'm usually the one partaking of the leftovers, just because the uh, the amount of food that I need to cook fresh on a regular basis is more than what we consume. So she gets the fresh stuff and I get any leftovers. Like a good garbage disposal unit. There's also a lot of things that, uh, that I make now that I just won't eat because of keto. Yeah, I, I normally label things that I think are going to be sticking around for a while if they're not uh, really clear what they are. Um, Almost every time there's a salad and dressing involved, I'll just whip up something fresh. 
and the stuff in the squeeze bottles either eventually gets thrown out or I'll just drink it if I'm really thirsty. I mean, I'll use it intentionally when, uh, when I need it. <clears throat> so that is the super basic pancake syrup. Um... The caramel sauce is very, very, very similar, except you use uh, cream instead of water. And you uh, bring everything to a gentle boil and you let it boil until it's thick. Uh, and that's usually, and there's usually about five minutes of a gentle boil. And you have to keep stirring it the entire time. The real way to make caramel is to melt the sugar and the safest way to do that is do like a quarter of water and then the, the normal amount of sugar. You have this really thick solution. Raise the temperature and before the water boils off, uh, your heating vessel will probably be at the right temperature. And then as the water is boiling off, what you're left with is this um, sugar that's heating more and more and more. And then eventually it'll caramelize it. Just adding the water slows down the process and makes it a lot safer because unless you're experienced with melting sugar on your stovetop, it's easy to burn yourself, it's easy to burn the sugar, and the water just slows down that entire process, which is why I highly recommend it. Once you have the sugar by itself uh, at a high temperature, it will start changing color. The Maillard process, uh, the effect is where the caramelization happens, it starts turning caramel color, starts smelling like caramel, becomes caramel, caramel is caramel, and then you add the, the fats. And that's when you have to whisk it like crazy. And I do have a couple of videos where I do that, so I'm not going to belabor the point here. I'm going to get into some uh, waffles. Because that's why we're here. All the waffles. Let me know when I get to complain about the size of my kitchen. <laughs> Okay, I need two eggs uh, separated. Because they're just not playing well with each other. They need a timeout. I might be running out of bowls today, prematurely. This is going to be what? all sorts of fun. I know. Oh, there's some that I didn't run the dishwasher because there wasn't. Aha! The Dishima washer is, has not been taken out for a run. That's okay. We'll make do. Relax. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. That's hilarious. Okay, so we're going to separate these eggs first things first. I'm going to tap a tap of this egg. I'm going to break it over one bowl. Make sure there's nothing weird. I'm going to just pour the yolk back and forth. Separate the white from the yolk. If something catastrophic happens and you get some your yolk breaks and it gets in with the white. Just put it into a separate bowl. There's always a little piece of, I shouldn't say always, frequently a piece of white that just doesn't want to let go. You can just use a paper towel. Okay, so I have my yolk over here in the one bowl. I have my white. It's going into a separate bowl. For anyone that uh, knows a trick to deal with broken eggshells, please let me know because I have no idea how to how to do this. Hopefully, it doesn't happen today. Nah. Again, I'm Use going to. My fingers. Yeah, using your fingers. Apparently, that's that's pretty traditional. So just going back and forth, back and forth a couple of times. I think this yolk is about to break. So good enough. Huh. 
There is something floating over here. I think it's a piece of yolk. So we can pretend it's a piece of shell and we can see if I can stab at it with my fingers or uh -huh, I can cut right through the white and scoop up that little speck of whatever that is. The eggshell itself is amazing for cutting through the white. And that's why when there's pieces of eggshell, you can usually just cut right through the lick, the goopiness, and uh, scoop up the eggshell with, with the little piece with a little egg cup. At the very least, you can get the eggshell, the little cup, to the bottom of your bowl, and just push the, egg, the loose pieces of eggshell along the side of the bowl, and then you can just take it up with your fingers. Um, great trick to, to learn. No master, part of your repertoire. Congratulations, you get full credits. So the first things first is we need to whip the egg whites until stiff peaks form. And a pinch of salt. Not garlic powder, salt. When people say a pinch, they mean literally a pinch. So I'm just going to grab a pinch of salt. Boom. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon, give or take. Uh, there's something nice and visceral about just grabbing food and throwing it around. I am going to start this off on a low speed. Once I speed the hand mixer up, I will need to mute the camera slash microphone. <sighs> Any points redemptions for me to complain yet? Okay, so I'm going to start this off on a low speed just until the different parts of the egg white are incorporating and then I'm going to want to tilt the bowl and uh, speed up the hand mixer and that's where the magic is going to happen. The reason I want to tilt it, I want to maximize the amount of air that gets underneath the egg white as it's being whipped into shape. I mean whipped, uh, whipped up. Soft peaks, when I pull the beater up, the egg white will come up and fold over like a soft ice cream cone in a commercial and a stiff peak when you pull the egg, be the, the egg beater. The, the beater up, the uh, egg white will stay upright. So this is fully incorporated. I'm going to speed this up and tilt a little bit. And then hopefully it's not too loud. too loud, let me know. But you can see the color is already changing. It's turning white. It's getting frothy. Speed it up some more. Now we're just at a ridiculous speed. I'm going to turn off the Okay, so this is just whipped up. It's not stiff peaks yet. I mean, the egg whites are barely lifting up. So I need to whip this up for a, a little longer. We are going to get to ludicrous speed. Yeah. Okay, so you can see I lifted up the beaters. That's a stiff peak. That's not flopping around a whole lot. Even when I'm shaking it, they're not flopping around a whole lot. This is about as stiff as your 
Feel free to say it. Someone's 12. Uh, well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, kitty cat. I appreciate it. So this I'm going to set off to the side. I'm going to hydrate a little, or maybe reverse hydrate with my coffee. Cheers. I'm going to unplug my hand mixer. I'm going to clean off the egg whites. Next we have, in a separate bowl, I need to cream the uh, yolks, the sugar, and vanilla. So the amount of vanilla is one whole teaspoon. Which is to say a third of a tablespoon. Wait. I'm measuring the teaspoon off to the side just because if I try to measure it over the uh, egg yolks. I might spill, I might miss, I might make a mess, I might get too much vanilla in here. No one's really going to complain, but you really shouldn't uh, veer too far from the recipe. Well, I need... How much sugar goes in here? Wah. Oh, you know what? I think I have the, uh, the wrong... You know what? There's supposed to be a couple of tablespoons of sugar in here, and uh, it's not the recipe. Shame on me. One tablespoon. Two tablespoons. Somebody please remind me to update the recipe. Card with the uh, sugar. Update the recipe card. Thank you. So I'm going to plug this in. Take a good look at the yolks. At some point, they're going to get lighter and lighter in color and fluffier, and that's when I know that they're properly creamed. And speaking of creaming, what I should do is uh, start my butter melting. And in here I need, uh, I'm doing a full batch, aren't I? I need one and a half cups of melted butter, which is a whole lot of butter. Urgh. Urgh, cutting board. Conveniently, the down in the in the Americas, do your packages of butter come uh, with markings about indicating where a cup is or <clears throat> or do you just go with the sticks like this? wrapper shows where one cup is and another half so I'm going to measure a cup and a half because it's actually on the package I I know some places use sticks which are normally what half a cup There's four sticks to a package and a package is typically two cups that's a lot of butter or as I like to say almost enough And I need two cups of whole milk, which I don't have, so I'm going to use the next even better thing and use uh, two cups of 10% cream. Oh, yeah. I actually can use one and, one and three quarter cups of 10% uh, cream and then uh, half a cup of, sorry, one and a half cups of this, then half a cup of water. 
It's going to give me the same fat content. Actually, a fair bit more than three and a quarter percent of a whole milk. I know some people have access to milk that's uh, in the five to seven percent fat range, which is amazing. Super jealous. For us, it's skim one, two, three and a quarter percent, and then it jumps to ten percent for table cream or half and half. And then something around 18, and then 33-ish for heavy whipping cream. <clears throat> so this mixture, I'm just going to leave on medium-low heat and let that melt. I'm going to get back to creaming this. And then it's really straightforward. I combine the wet ingredients into a bowl, make sure they're properly uh, whisked together, except for the egg whites. I add the flour and baking powder, stir it well, and then I fold in the egg whites. And then this gets uh, put into my waffle maker. And then everything's fantastic. If you see any black flakes in the egg yolk mixture, that's the vanilla seeds. That's part of the vanilla bean that's broken apart from me shaking it vigorously. Like, I will take it out because the color is going to look weird, but that's from the vanilla. Remember when I said, like Rick Astley, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not gonna lie to anyone here, I'm not going to hide any weirdness or errors, I'm actually going to draw attention to it. That's me drawing attention to that. Potentially gross thing. And yes, Mariah Cat and Kitty Cat, I know the, the markings are usually way off. Even though this is in the, the realm of baking, you can be off by a lot on the ingredients and still come out with a really, really awesome result. And since I've been chatting for a while, you can see that this color is a lot lighter. It's not exactly frothy, and we're not looking to froth this up, but the color is a lot lighter, and the sugar and the vanilla are fully incorporated. So in the meantime, I'm going to get a bowl for my dry ingredients. Oh yeah, Mariah Cat. Well, the, the individual sticks that we get up here, because some of our butters come in sticks. These things are all perfectly uniform in size, but the if you're talking about the markings on the side, like where, yeah, like this. This is not in the middle. <laughs> this is nowhere near the middle. The middle is uh, like half an inch over. Yeah, kitty cat, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. You, re you really can't have too much butter in the batter. <clears throat> um, mostly because, if, like, if you think about it, the, the exterior plates on your waffle iron, uh, if there's extra butter, you're just going to end up with an extra crispier thing once the exterior is uh, browning. And the extra butter that's on the edge is just going to help speed up that browning process. And as long as the interior uh, is cooked properly, like cooked, you're going to end up with a perfect waffle. The exterior is going to be nice and crispy, nice and buttery, nice and brown. The inside is going to be nice and moist and super buttery and cooked. And if it's not super buttery, if it's a little buttery, it's still good. So you really can't go wrong with a little bit too much butter, which is, again, almost enough. Okay, this is going to hang out for a few minutes. This over here, what I'm gesturing at wildly off to the side, is the butter and milk. Right. 
I don't want to boil the milk. I don't want to heat this up too much or too quickly. So it's going to take a few minutes for the butter to melt. We got lots of time today. Because today we're doing the uh, baked. I'll do the baked uh, pancakes next. Uh, when I start it, I'll preheat the oven uh, and I'll make a half batch so it'll be nice and thin. It's going to take uh, 20 minutes to cook or to bake. And then we'll finish off with the old school stovetop pancakes. So we've got lots of time today. Yeah, kitty cat, there's... Some people are just in complete denial and they're so resistant to change that they I think they get some sort of cognitive dissonance and I know that phrase is abused but they just they're willfully oblivious to the fact that somebody is leaving and that the organization is going to change or their their daily routine or their regular routine is going to change uh, most people don't like change but in a big hurry you realize that person or that group that you thought was not replaceable that was completely irreplaceable that people just couldn't function without you get along just fine without them. There's a very few organizations where a single employee is essential for the survival and the continuing success of said organization. It's pretty darn rare. Oh, and Rich is here, wicked. With the uh, super pimp, Mary. I didn't know that there was a, do I have that? I do have that. Hi, Mary. In the meantime, I'm going to get my dry ingredients. And don't worry about the egg whites. They're still firmly in the upright position. I'm avoiding using the five letter naughty-ish word for now. Erect, whoops, I said it. You tricked me, how dare you. He said her well. I need two cups of all-purpose flour. Oh, here's a great question no one's asked yet. That was hilarious. When you're measuring out from your bag of flour, you can take your measuring cup and then use the flat side of a knife to scrape across the top nice and gently to get exactly one cup. This flour wasn't compressed. I didn't squish it into place. So just loosely picking it up and uh, giving it a little shaky shaky in the cup so it evens off at really close to exactly a cup, I'm fine with. If I was making something more like a pastry, I would be measuring this to the gram because you kind of need to for some most pastries. And one of the recipes today for the pancake actually recommends a specific number of grams for the flour. Uh, it's fine to go by the volume if it's loosely uh, scooped in. If it's tightly packed, it's, it's going to be too much uh, flour. Now the question that people didn't ask, but should have, in my opinion. Can I use cake flour? Because I'm making pancakes. Yeah, yeah, you can. The only difference between cake flour and regular flour is the protein content. And the protein is where the that uh, sticky... stuff that makes bread sticky with like this glue stuff like it's very glute glue and glutinous maybe glutinous maybe that's where the word gluten comes from kind of does so the higher the protein content of your flour the more glutinous the finished product is and you still have to knead uh, the heck out of the the flour or the dough that you're making the thicker batter however you want to call it because cake flour has significantly lower protein content than all purpose it's harder to form gluten uh, bread flour, on the other hand, has approximately twice the protein content of cake flour, which is what you want for making bread 
and not what you want for making cake. You don't want your cake to be uh, sticky togethery like bread. You want it to be a little more crumbly. You still want it super moist. You want to load it up with fats. But you want it to be uh, less glutinous. And that's the difference. So yes, you can make your pancakes and your crepes and your waffles with cake flour. You really don't need to. Just buy the cheap stuff, the all-purpose. All these recipes are designed to work with the all-purpose flour. I hope that answers the question that nobody was asking. Yeah, well, sticky cake is uh, is yummy. Um, but normally you, you make your cake sticky with uh, syrups and, well, sugars and uh, fruits. Yeah, some sort of sugar. And uh, extra fat. So more butter, more syrup makes cakes more awesome. Into this two cups of flour, we're going to add four four teaspoons of baking powder, not bacon powder. And we all know that four teaspoons is a tablespoon and a teaspoon. So off to the side, I'm going to measure exactly one tablespoon and one teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda. If you're using buttermilk instead of regular milk, if you're using something with uh, more acidity, you can get away with using baking soda instead of baking powder because the baking powder gets activated with the acid from the buttermilk, which is just uh, milk with vinegar or lemon juice. So in this bowl, I have my baking powder, not soda, and flour. Kitty cat, we've just we've decided a long time ago that bacon powder would be good. I think if I made extra crispy bacon and I let it dry between some towels for a while, I could run that through my juicer, and uh, I would get finer than regular bacon bits out of it. So one of these days, I probably will do that. Okay, so off to the side, I'm going to very, very slowly see if this butter and milk are sufficiently melted together that I can mix them together. Very close. So I'm just mixing this off to the side. Yeah, I'm doing this like a total heathen. I'll try to slide this up. The cream mixture is fairly warm. The butter was close to room temperature to begin with, so it should be close to not exactly room temperature. So it should be fully incorporated very soon. Letting your <laughs> bacon powder, letting your ingredients come to room temperature is one of the huge, huge advantages to the European, especially French, uh, rationale behind just leaving your eggs and butter out at room temperature. Um, in France especially, uh, you'll have eggs on your counter of like freshly laid eggs and you don't run them straight to your fridge and freak out about salmonella. Just leave them on your counter for you know days on end until you use them. Apparently, it's safe. Um, don't eat raw stuff. Don't eat things that aren't pasteurized, and don't uh, risk salmonella or any sort of food contamination, pathogeny stuff. If you're expecting or lactating or immunocompromised, for real, don't. 
Okay, so from here, I'm going to slowly incorporate this mixture. Low speed, I'm just going to add, I hope this bowl is big enough. I better keep it at a low temperature, low speed, low everything. Woo! I was pushing the envelope. This could have been a catastrophe. Soup bowls in general are three cups. This is about the size of a soup bowl. I can tell because there's about three cups of stuff in here and I'm really close to the, the lip on it. So I wasn't too, too worried. Mariah Cat, you know what? Somebody did once say to always use a bigger bowl than you think you need. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder who that was. Now, I, I knew this was big enough, but uh, again, don't do what Danny Dalton does. <laughs> Okay, so this is nicely mixed. I'm going to just quickly double check that we have all of our ingredients together. <clears throat> because I don't have my recipe card in front of me until I click over here. I have two eggs separated. I have the whites and the pinch of salt over there. I have the extract, vanilla extract, the butter, the milk in here. I have the baking, not bacon, powder and flour in this bowl. I'm unplugging the... I might actually need my hand mixer. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the mixer for this. You can do this with a fork, you can do this with a, a spoon, you can do this with your whisk. I have the power tool in my hand, as might as well just use it since it's here. And we very, very carefully just dump the whole thing in here. And what we should end up with is a wet batter. Thinner than a cake batter. Uh, actually, kind of close to a cake batter. But way, way, way thinner than, than dough. Now, normally when we do pancakes, especially from a box, you want clumps. You don't want the super smooth pancake, you want uh, you want clumps in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug in my little Mineo waffle maker. And uh, in a few minutes, I'll plug in the big one. So I want to do these separately, just so you can see the difference. I know this bad boy takes approximately a quarter cup. So I'll make sure this is centered. Wetter is better. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Rich. I don't know. I don't know. There is, uh, it is possible for something to be too wet. And yes, these things are adorable. I, I absolutely, I, I, I really, really, really like these things. They're super cute. And <clears throat> for anyone looking at doing keto, which I don't recommend, for reasons I discuss regularly, and I'll go over again if somebody really wants to know, I highly recommend getting a couple of these. Just a little bit of cooking spray. Now I'm looking for a quarter of a cup measuring gizmo, which I thought I had, but I don't know where. Ooh, at la. J'avais deux, un en acier, un autre en plastique. Où sont 
Le coup. Ouvrez la fenêtre. Fermez la porte. And according to Google Translate, I was asking where my plastic and metal measuring cups were. And to open the window and close the door. Oh, yeah. When the magic light turns off, it's ready. That was scary. <clears throat> it was almost like it was on cue. So when I said ready, it just went click. Mary, lurk, lurk on. I'm going to take a one quarter cup of batter with butter. Exactly one quarter cup. I'm actually leveling this off. Yoink. This is going to be a little frothy because of the baking powder. I'm pretty sure this takes exactly a quarter cup because this is how I measure my keto shuffles. I hope that's not too much. It actually might be. Let's find out. The one thing I don't like about these, shh, you didn't hear that. The one thing I, I don't like about these is uh, the cleanup is a total pain in the ass. But um, it's worth it. I love you, Dash Mini Waffle Maker. So depending on Valhalla's Angel, welcome. Oh, you hiked uphill. Close enough. Were you listening to good goth music? Were you old school listening to Visigoth music? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh yeah, kitty cat. There's there's nothing wrong with chopping these in half uh, to make like a mini sandwich. Normally, what we do is uh, I'll make two of these. That's why I had a pair because as soon as I bought this to test it out, I realized that I'll be making pairs of these, two pairs at a time for one for each of us. So instead of cooking four separate chaffles, uh, I'd make two pairs of chaffles. Uh, real Therina, no. No, I don't add oil to water when I hard boil eggs. Some people say uh, to add some vinegar because it helps with the peeling after. Uh, I think they're insane. I think they, they really need to go get their meds updated and get some serious therapy. Uh, there might be something to it, but I, I never do. I don't know why you would add a blip of oil to water when hard boiling eggs. I, ha I have heard of that. I don't know why people would. I do know when you're uh, doing like uh, red Easter eggs uh, for like Orthodox Easter, uh, the red dyed eggs are very traditional. Uh, some people will put a, just a drop of oil on them after they're boiled and uh, polish the eggs up so they're shiny. I don't know if it's related. It might be. One thing to watch out for with the any of the waffle makers, don't play with it till it's done. I did set my timer for three minutes, about 20 seconds into the process. You really need to play around with your waffle makers. Make sure they're fully preheated. Quickly get the batter onto the elements. Close the lid and either... My bigger one um, doesn't heat quite as quickly as this one or cook quite as quickly. Cook quite as quickly. Wow, see that four times fast. But when the light comes on... Oh, neat. Uh, it's it's going to be mostly cooked. When this one, uh, when the heating light comes off, it's going to be really close to the right temperature and mostly cooked. So it's been in for three minutes and about 20 seconds. I'm confident I can flip this open now and take a look at this. Could have used uh, just a touch more batter. I want this to be a little darker. But you can see just how much butter is in there. It's wicked awesome. The Dash Mini Makers that are not just round uh, tend to get expensive. There's ones that are, I think there's like a Spider-Man one. 
There's heart-shaped ones. There's ones with uh, like Mickey Mouse head. It, it seems to be the exact same gizmo, except for this one is ten dollars versus the cool ones are fifty U.S. Spider webs. Spider webs. That's that's pretty goth, yeah. If you really want to do a lattice or do something with spiders, what you can do, um, and if somebody really wants me to do this later, I will. You know, call me out on it. You get a thin pancake batter and something like this, and then you literally draw the way a spider would in your hot oiled pan, your spider web creation. And you need the connecting bars, strands, to hold the whole thing together. If you really wanted to get to that kind of presentation or make it extra cool for the kids or yourself. <clears throat> oh, it's it's only ten dollars. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's that's wicked awesome. Yeah, jump on it. <laughs> is it a dash or is it another brand? That's that's my big question. Okay, I think that's good. Now the one thing for the Dash Mini Maker is I'm just gonna wipe this clean. Just get the edge of your IKEA branded silicone spatula. So that's gonna go on a plate. If I really, really, really wanted to, I could throw some extra butter on this before I serve it with a knife and a fork and some syrup. Do you want extra butter? Sure. It's kind of a no-brainer, right? Doopa doopa doo. I should probably take a picture, but of course I won't. Uh, you can. You can load this up with syrup, you can load this up with any sort of sauce, you can take any sort of chopped up berries. On something more uh, traditional Dutch waffle where the impressions are really big, you can get a bunch of small strawberries and put a small strawberry inside of each impression. And then uh, put a light dusting of uh, powdered sugar or just a stripe of heavy whip or of whipped cream. Um, it gets crazy. It gets super crazy. Now, I'm going to show you all the difference between this and the fluffier kind. This one's going to go back on. It's going to heat up pretty quickly. I'm going to put another little quick splash of cooking oil. Murder geese, nice. So this is more shook up, it's cooling down. This is uh, about room temperature now. It's still gonna pour fairly runny. Here. Come on. Okay, so this is gonna go get served before I fix the recipe. Exterior. Yeah, super buttery. Now, the thing that we didn't do was incorporate our egg whites. So we're going to fold these in really quickly. And then I'm going to ask Mademoiselle Nouveau if she even noticed the difference. These are going to be a little floofier, and the egg whites that I'm just gently folding in. Over chickens. Over <laughs> <Cobra> chickens. <laughs> yeah. So, Rich, yes. Um, if you were eating regular waffles, yeah, how many of these for a plate? You'd probably want three or four. 
which is uh, about the same surface area as my bigger pastel green waffle maker, which I'm which I'm going to get to soon. Sea foam green, if you will. Um, for the keto stuff, a pair of cheese chaffles is incredibly filling. It's a ton of calories. It's a lot of calories. Very, very low carbs, but tons of calories. And people that are used to having their tummies full with meals and not just stopping when they've had enough, consumed enough energy. One of my good friends, he's like that. He's uh, he's quite the glutton. And this isn't a judgment. It's just he's, he's described himself this way um, many times. He eats like a pig. He wants to be stuffed when he's done eating. And even then he wants to cram more food down his gullet. He has a very active lifestyle. And then when he doesn't, he gains like, I don't know, 30 to 50 pounds a year. Not particularly healthy. So this year when he gets back on Team Keto, or Team Reasonable Lifestyle, whichever comes first, uh, he really, really, really is going to be working on, and I'm going to hold him to this, like any good friend does, I'm going to hold him to being a little more uh, reasonable with his portions. So having said that, <clears throat> three or four from the mini waffle is probably a really, really big breakfast. If you're serving this with a couple of strips of bacon or some sausage links or an egg or two, probably want one or two. If you're just going for the stack of waffles, yeah, three or four is about right for a really, really big breakfast. Your mileage may vary. Nice. Yeah, Mariah Kat, the, the, the single biggest piece of advice that I can give anybody that's looking, one of my, one of my clients told me this. He, uh, he jumped on the ham diet, half as much. So instead of loading his plate up with a, with a bunch of stuff, he'd use a smaller plate or just literally stop when his plate was half full <clears throat> just to control his portions. The normal recommendation for keto is half your plate should be veg and then uh, and then the rest is your, you know, tasty food. <laughs> so we have a slightly heaping quarter cup. And depending on how much this rises, depending on how active your bacon, baking powder is, you might need a little more or a little less. You're just gonna have to gauge how much batter to put in, but around a quarter cup is the right amount. And this might be a little too much, we're gonna find out right away. Three to four minutes for the timer on this is about right. was I? Oh yeah, portion. So half as much <clears throat> is a heck of a way to start. Um, the advice that I try to give people though is when you can figure out the difference between feeling full and sorry, between your stomach saying that it's empty and your body saying it's low on energy, which is, it's kind of synonymous. It's kind of analogous to feeling full or being satiated. They're, they're pretty similar. If you're eating till you're stuffed every time, you're going to get used to feeling stuffed every time you eat. If you slow down the eating process and stop when you're pretty sure you've had enough energy, uh, when you get up from your meal, you're probably not going to be super hungry. And even if you're not full, uh, you're probably fine. And after doing that for a week or two, you're going to get used to it. But we're here for decadence and not for health and nutrition unless you want i mean i'm happy to talk about the keto and the the, the food healthy stuff but it's not exactly uh, sexy unlike my french toast which is super sexy i still get a real kick out of way letting me know about the uh the French toast picture is being too sexy for Discord, getting flagged as porn. That was that was brilliant. So 
So now we're going to see what the difference is between the extra egg and the regular batter. Now the egg white's going to add a bit of stability. The egg white is going to be capturing any steam that uh, rises, that expands. It should be a little bigger, it should be a little fluffier, uh, and it should be a touch more filling because of the protein from the egg white. Having said that, egg white is uh, mostly liquid. So we're going to see in a big hurry. Now the nice thing is this hasn't uh, poofed over, this hasn't um, overflowed the well. Do Oreos count as a vegetable? Pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah. V8's fantastic for you. I was in a food study. I keep met. Can somebody, you, studio audience, can you write this down? Oh, what was the other thing I was supposed to write down? Oh, I can't even remember. No, we'll have to rewind the video. We have to rewind the video. Group 880. If somebody can make a note of group 880. 880, 880 was my number from a food study uh, at the Richardson Center for Nutraceuticals and Food Sciences. Or is it Functional Food Sciences? Whatever it was. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> Kriana, thank you. There was a really, really, really precise uh, food study that I was involved in. And uh, we got to play with the DEXA machines and everything was, oh, look at that beautiful golden browniness. Thanks. Is there a real difference? I don't think so. But I'm going to go plate this up for Mademoiselle Nouveau and see what she thinks. No, you have to remember the other thing that you don't say. Don't weave me into this. This is all you. I don't care if it's my show. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad. The reason I bring up that food study is because we were supposed to have a minimum, I was supposed to have a minimum of 10 servings of veggies a day. Now, no matter what's on the plate with this much butter and syrup, it's going to be delicious, right? And it's part of my theory on why people go so crazy for seafood. It has nothing to do with the taste of the seafood. It has everything to do with the garlic butter. Ooh. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, it's like those little waffle cookies that you'll get yeah, in uh, cones say. from the, the gelato places. I think I think it's the same recipe. Yeah, like the extra butter in the wells really sells the decadence, right? I'll be right back. Do -ba -do -ba -do. It's the bottom of your <clears throat> So back to my back to story time. We were supposed to have a minimum of 10 servings of veggies a day, and a serving of veggie was defined as one cup of raw or half a cup of cooked. Now, there was ways to game the system because cooking a boiled carrot has the same volume as a raw carrot. So you can take a cup of carrots, boil them, and all of a sudden it becomes two servings of carrots, or if you leave it raw, it's one serving of carrot. Yes, Kriana, and that was the whole point. It was a lot of volume of food. It was a ton of fiber. But in general, one cup of your average raw vegetable uh, has very similar nutrient characteristics. And then I realized V8 and the packaging, brilliant packaging, two servings per cup. And I'm like, wait a minute, that kind of makes sense. And I flipped this container around and I looked at the, the macros. I'm like, huh, each serving is approximately two servings of raw veggies which makes sense, and that's what the claim is. So then I scoured the city buying the big jugs of V8. Yeah, Maiden, I, I love the stuff, especially the uh, the spicy kind. And I would drink a uh, 1.18 liter, what was the size, 1.78 liters, like half, half a gallon? Yeah, a V8 per day. 
because that was all of the veggies that I needed. Now, if I was smart, I would have loaded it with vodka. But uh, it was good. I'm going to get back to the vodka story in just a second. How was it? Why is this one better? <clears throat> Okay, so this one was more floofy. The one with the egg white, go figure, was more floofy. The other one was more crispy, more shortbread like because it only had the egg yolk, more fat. Yeah, so uh, there we go. I am now going to make a big batch for a stack of four. I guess this plate is getting sticky all over the place. Some sort of giggity oink. And then we're going to get to uh, some other stuff. Wow, we're an hour and a half in? Jeepers. I'm going to pick up the pace just a touch. This thing's going to be, this thing I'm gesturing out wildly is going to be fairly hot. That's when someone's supposed to say, you're fairly hot. And say, fairly, and start crying. Totally. Aw, totally. oh, thanks. You're so sweet. Why, thank you. Barely. Come on. Better than barely. Okay, so that's uh, fairly centered. Okay. Sure. Plugged in. I'm going to give this a quick spritz. Just out of habit of the Kirkland cooking spray. Oh, well, back to the food story. Yeah, the back then I was a little concerned about the sodium content, so I would uh, alternate between low sodium V8 and uh, the extra spicy, extra sodium V8. Um, drinking that much tomato juice, uh, it was very filling to begin with. So I would drink about a quarter of it at a time. And uh, yeah, it went a really long way. And I did, I did very, very well on that food study. Uh, and the neat thing is the predictions, the estimates for what the weight loss would be were very, very accurate for me. A lot of that had to do with uh, the accuracy of my measurements uh, because the other participants in the study were, uh, how to put this? big fat liars about what they were consuming and their level of activity. <clears throat> so instead of being accurate for what their activity was on a daily basis, because we had to keep food journals and, and measure things out and everything else. Um, being math guy, I was super precise with everything that I did. And when we plugged in my super precise measurements, well, as precise as I could be, into the, uh, the formulas and the estimates from the people running the study, um, they were within a, a small fraction of a pound estimating what my weight would be. <sighs> well, Mariah Cat, well, wine does count as fruit because it's loaded with carbs, and really all fruit is is you maybe has some antioxidant properties, which red wine apparently has, and a whole bunch of carbs, which fruit and wine both have. So, so there we have it. Oh, and the, that urban legend, the myth about drinking a glass of wine every day is healthy for you, seems to be completely backwards. And it's that the people that uh, are wired to do things in moderation are more likely to have a moderate lifestyle and be healthier. Not because they drink one glass of wine per day, but they're wired to only drink one glass of wine per day and that's good for them. They're going to have a similar attitude to the rest of, uh, of their existence. Plus, anyone that can afford to have just a glass of wine per day uh, is probably affluent enough to uh, engage in other healthy activities. So it seems like the cause and effect were backwards. Apparently. Well, I mean, how do you define a glass, right? Yeah. Bottles are usually made out of glass, so it's one glass bottle. It's one glass bottle. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> This, I believe, is ready. Now, I should be able to get approximately the same amount of batter per well. So I'm going to try to scoop in one quarter of a level batter. And I want to do this fairly quickly. The nice thing about this, this is also a dash waffle maker. The nice thing about this is it has channels on the side. You can see here and here and here and here and on the other side where the excess batter will flow into these channels on the side. Makes for a little easier cleaning. What I really wanted was a waffle maker that had removable plates that were dishwasher safe, PFOE and PBA, etc, 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 safe. Could not find. And you know what? I think these need a little more than a quarter cup. Yeah, I think these are a touch bigger than the minis. So I'm just going to put in a little more. I haven't done uh, real waffles in this yet. I've just done chaffles. And my chaffles have been a little wonky for size since I got this. And I've only had this waffle maker for a few weeks. Good enough. Let's uh, let's see what happens. Uh, you need one of those uh, batter dispensers. <clears throat> yeah, batter dispenser is a heck of an idea. When you're doing pancakes, you should use a measuring cup and uh, start pouring. I'll, I'll demonstrate this too. Just start pouring in the middle of your frying pan or your skillet and slowly make a bigger and bigger circle so you have this very even circular disc for your pancake and measure them so you have a consistent size pancake. It just looks better too. I probably should have, in hindsight, done a half batch because I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of this. I could just spend the rest of the day making waffles and then freezing them and then have toaster waffles ready, which is not a bad idea. In fact, that's probably going to happen. Ooh, a lid with a straw. Perfect. Nice. Mariah Cat, you uh, you have fun. Hope your mom's doing well. And uh, we'll see you tonight. Yeah, it's a giant sippy cup. Sippy cup of wine. Sippy cup of wine. Sounds kind of perfect. Silence. So relaxing. I think I'm going to take this batter and uh, wrap it in plastic. And I will make the rest of these wrapped in plastic. Make the rest of these for later. You know, the other thing I totally forgot to do was take pictures. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Oh, my God. Okay, and a fifth of liquor is 13 ounces, right? Can somebody Google that for me? I think it is. Because I know uh, a certain rapper guy made drinking a fifth of vodka and daring people to play Smash Up Derby. Uh, it was a lyric somewhere. But I don't really think that 13 ounces of liquor is an incredibly high amount. Paper. 
seven seconds. Oh my god. A fifth is just over, so it's 26 ounces? Really? Like it's a full two six? Oh, it's 25.6 fluid ounces. <clears throat> ah, a fifth of a gallon. That makes more sense. Okay, so that's a normal bottle. That's 750 mils. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Uh, it looks like I needed a little more. Oh my god, these things are like... Mutant. Steam in. Steamed up the camera too. Hopefully the camera is uh, less steamy now. Yes. Okay. So I guess a fifth of vodka is a uh, it's a reasonable amount of getting drunkenness. <laughs> uh, thanks, Maiden. That's that's cute. <laughs> Am I going to do one more batch of waffles? Nah, I think we're going to pull the plug on this. Yoink. I'm going to scoop up these and just throw them on a plate for now. What do you mean, you kid? Okay, so here we have... Our waffles, kind of crispy, kind of very buttery. And I can take. Really? Is our neighbor having fun? No, I just mean. Yeah, yeah. How many more of these am I eating? You're not. I'm just decorating these for now. Cool. Not allowed. If this was, oh, if the wells were more full, I think this would not be as uh, quite as brittle. And one more layer on top. Here's our stack of pancakes. I mean waffles. To the garbage with you. And now we're just going to quickly drench this in syrup. One, two, three. Oh, I'm drenching every layer. Sugar free syrup. Valhalla's Angel, I have a few different. Uh, chaffle recipes. What I don't like about coconut flour, I, I can't remember if you're allergic to almond. <clears throat> coconut flour is a lot more uh, dense nutritionally as well than uh, almond flour. And you can have a fairly neutral tasting cheese waffle. Yeah. And for the sugar-free syrup, make your own. Like You have access to allulose. You can make your own everything. And I made a uh, Caramel, like legitimate caramel with allulose on stream a couple of months ago. Looked like caramel, smelled like caramel, tasted like caramel, still stayed uh, smooth like caramel. I dipped strawberries in it hours after the fact. It was really, really tasty caramel. And only slightly dangerous to make. Just because when you add... Uh, when you add the cream to your melted, the caramelized allulose, it's going to froth up. So make sure you're using a bigger pot than uh, than you think you need. But there, it is in one of my Friday streams. And it was uh, really, really, really close to zero carb. Oh, and speaking of which, I invented raspberry jam. That's four net grams per cup. You heard that right. 
four net grams of carbs per cup. Cup. I'm going to let that sink in while I see if Mademoiselle Nouveau wants to. Yeah, per cup, I know, right? Uh, just cut into this with a fork. Maybe have one bite. More crispiness, bigger in the dentations. Good. Do you prefer that over the minis? Yeah. <clears throat> and it's because of the texture, right? Like the actual geometry of the, the waffles? Yeah. There's more <coughs> stuff. It's just, yeah. Good work. Crispy on the outside, softer on the inside, bigger. Uh, so these are these are better than uh, the Belgian-ish waffle maker is creates a better waffle than the mini, mostly because of the geometry, the the wells, because these little spikety bits, cigarettes, whatever they are, um, because they create deeper impressions. There's more surface area. There's more uh, opportunity for crispiness. And there's more floofiness on the inside uh, because each one of these are slightly more surface area than the mini there, there's just more batter there's more everything in this and again a lot more surface area and a lot more wells for more amounts of syrup and butter so just because of the geometry the topology if you will this is going to make a better waffle Okay, so really, really quick dive into keto, keto sugars. Stevia, if you like the taste, is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it. Monk fruit, if you like the taste, nothing wrong with it. It's fantastic. I personally have been buying erythritol with monk fruit. I need less of it than pure erythritol because the monk fruit is sweeter than erythritol. Stevia and monk fruit, Again, fantastic, no complaints. When you look at the sugar alcohols, also known as polyols, uh, from worst to best, you have maltitol, which is basically sugar, and unless you're lucky and your gut biome treats it like a sugar alcohol, uh, you're very likely gonna be spiking your insulin, even though it's a sugar alcohol. Xylitol is uh, only slightly better. It's bad for pets. Highly recommend you don't have any in your house if you have critters, um, again, Depending on your gut biome, your body might treat it more like a real sugar than it does like a sugar alcohol. There's a few other in between that are less commonly available, but the next most common sugar alcohol is erythritol. And that one is the king of the sugar alcohols. The glycemic index is very close to zero. Maltitol has a glycemic index, <clears throat> excuse me, of about 60, which is pretty close to a regular table sugar. Some people will measure Sugar alcohols, count them as half carbs, not zero carbs. That's only because of the bad effect xylitol and, and maltitol have on most people. So unless you're checking your blood glucose fasted uh, shortly after having some one of the sugar alcohols with nothing else, and then measuring your blood sugar uh, half an hour later, you won't really know how it affects you. Erythritol seems to be invariant for its glycemic index depending on your gut biome. All of the sugar alcohols can cause uh, bloating, gassy, stomach, owie, fartiness. Hmm. Last but not least is the Cadillac of the keto sugars, being allulose. Allulose is not a sugar alcohol. It is sugar. It's honest to God sugar found in nature. Our bodies just ignore it. So it has a zero glycemic index, effectively zero carbs. Technically, it's eight grams of carbs per cup. Technically. When you're using things like a tablespoon, you can safely round that down to zero because it's effectively zero. Allulose, you can caramelize. It dissolves like sugar. It, it's a hydrophilic like real sugar because it is real sugar it's like normal sucrose but zero carb it's also crazy expensive and not valid for sale as a food in most countries 
It's legal for sale in the States, but not in Canada. Up in Canada, it is uh, about $10 a cup when I can find it on Amazon. Um, as a daily sweetener, I stick with erythritol because it's a lot cheaper. Uh, as far as using... <laughs> as far as the normal cooking, if I'm doing something fancy, um, I will reach for the allulose. I don't know if stevia normally affects people's tummies differently. I know for me, I get this weird taste, just like cilantro. Some people love it, some people hate it. With uh, stevia, for me, I get this weird green tea, minty kind of vibe going on. And if I was making green tea or something minty, I'd reach for the stevia. But every time that I've tried to sweeten something with stevia, it's not quite sweet enough, it's not quite sweet enough, it's not quite sweet enough, and then I put like one grain too much and then it's disgusting. So Trader, it's... Trader Joe's so. Trader Joe sells allulose. Yeah. Um, I don't Let's have my... Whoever. Yeah, my uh, my cousin... Ah, here it is. <clears throat> Shut some up for me. I have like a quarter cup, this stuff. Now the weird thing is, because allulose isn't a sugar alcohol, it has to be listed as having gr uh, grams of carbs. And then on things like enlightened, oh, here's the weird thing actually. We can buy enlightened ice cream products up here that are sweetened with allulose, but I can't buy it can't buy separately. I can't buy it separately, but I can buy things sweetened with it. Go figure. It's a scam, I tell you. Big corn, big beet. <laughs> yeah. Or you can get it on Amazon if you're in the States. Uh, once in a while, some brave salespeople will list allulose on the Canadian Amazon. And I can get it that way. Uh, I still have a... I think I still have a, the bag itself that I got the last batch from. Yeah, for, for me, I can never find the sweet spot of... <laughs> I can never find the right amount of stevia to sweeten things. And, oh, what I was saying before, and this is the last thing about the keto. With the allulose, uh, when you look at the nutrition information on, on things sweetened with allulose, it'll show the carbs as if the allulose is real sugar. And then on the front of the package, it'll say, there'll be like a little asterisk somewhere saying, this is two net grams per serving, asterisk, and on the bottom in small print, because it it's sweetened with allulose. They're not allowed to include that on the nutrition label on the back of the package, because it's not recognized as being effectively zero carbs in North America yet. So for the labels, it'll say, Total carbs, fiber, sugar, starch, sugar alcohols. And the allulose, because it is a sugar, gets listed in with the sugars, even though it's effectively zero carbs. So you can pretend it's a sugar alcohol, but it's actually not a sugar alcohol. It's a legitimate sugar all by itself. And it's a truly unique thing. And it occurs naturally in nature, just like most things that are natural occur in nature. It's a little redundant again. I'm just going to trail off there and get onto the next uh, recipe. So there's the German waffles. Let's do uh, some German pancakes. German waffles? Let's make them German. We made them German? Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. The, um, the first one was a German waffle. The other ones were Belgian. The first one was German because it was a circle. Uh. So now we're going to make German pancakes. My friend, Mick Starch, <clears throat> who is German-ish, um, I'm sure he's going to yell at me tonight when he finds out about Miss Bavarian. Bavarianizing him. Maybe I'll make some Bavarian cream to put in between a layer here. Okay, we need to preheat the oven to 400-ish. I'm going to get that started. By ish, I mean exactly. 
just in case someone wants to play the home game. Well, I'm glad somebody finds my entertaining, entertainment entertaining. I'm going to slide this out of the way, hopefully not. Create too many catastrophes over here. Oh, if you happen to have one of these powdered shake a shake of things that you can get from your restaurant supplier or Amazon, uh, you can leave one loaded with cocoa, one loaded with uh, icing sugar or cinnamon. Well, our cinnamon dispenser has this. This is cocoa powder. Um, cinnamon dispenser already has little convenient dispenser uh, it's really good for uh, just decorating cakes and so on and then you can take a piece of paper let's really quickly show you this <clears throat> on screen you can cover and get a nice straight line now if I had this closer and I wasn't bumping into the waffle maker it would have been even more straight but you can get a very straight line of uh, cocoa powder so you can divide something in half and have one half of cocoa powder and then spin it around and then put your icing sugar on the other half and have this you can go all sorts of crazy and do like a checkerboard with it you can get all sorts of fancy with that uh, with the presentation with just a piece of paper and one of these little shake a shake a cups so we don't do presentation here we, we stay rustic which is blachos ease for crappy presentation but if you really want something like this is it's easy to do and it's a ton of fun you can also buy in decorating kits again off Amazon uh, little stencils so you can have little critter shapes or hearts and farts and rainbows or whatever and uh, just decorate however you want I need a quarter cup of butter to go in this cast iron pan. So what I'm going to do is take this cast iron pan, I'm going to heat it in the oven just to melt the butter. And this butter is going to form the base inside of the pan and this is what's going to be frying the batter and all the cooking all the magic happens at high temperature in the oven not quite room temperature butter again if you have a little too much butter which there's no such thing uh, it's fine so I have about a quarter cup goes into my cast iron pan. I'm just going to throw this straight into the oven just for a few minutes to let it melt while the oven's heating up. Again, it's going up to 400 Fahrenheit. I am going to... I think I'm going to do a full batch and I'm going to end up taking some of this over to my uh, my mom's. <clears throat> uh, not to give to her, but to feed the geese in her front yard and lure them over so they can uh, make beautiful honking sounds all day and all night. That'll learn her for disowning me this week. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm kidding. I, I will bring some over. I need one cup of all-purpose flour. Again, I vigorously shook this cup. 
Inside the bag, I loosely scooped up the flour. I didn't press the cup really firmly into the flour. I just wanted a loose one cup. We need about one cup of milk. And again, since we don't do milk around here, I'm going to do about three quarters, 10% cream, the rest of water. Here's where we get crazy. Here's where we get crazy. We need six eggs. Six. That, my friends, is a lot of eggs. on the cast iron pan just to make sure that the butter isn't just melting and it's not sizzling boiling hot check the camera perfect one blue egg cracking it off to the side no unwanted bits in there Two, two eggs. Third bluish egg. Just love the color on the inside of these. It's so neat. The reason I'm breaking these eggs off to the side and into a separate cup is just in case, because these are firm fresh eggs, just in case I don't have just egg whites and egg yolks, but I have something else and not a fun surprise like a kinder egg kitty cat the color of the egg has to do with the the type of chicken so there are some hens that will lay brown eggs there's some hens that will lay blue eggs the food itself will change the coloring a little bit but it's apparently it all has to do with what kind of a chicken it is I'm sure you could feed them food dye and everything's gonna change color so we have this 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 I need a eighth of a teaspoon of salt which I can throw in anywhere. Um, again, happy pinch, eighth of a teaspoon. I'm going to loosely beat these eggs. I just want them to be incorporated. I want, I don't want to see any ribbons of the egg white. I don't want this to froth up. I'm not trying to make a meringue or anything. Just a low setting on your gizmo I'm going to stop as soon as I am confident that the egg whites are fully incorporated <clears throat> just because I don't want a section of the pancake to have just egg white and flour because it'll be a, a little weird There's a little bit left, I'm gonna, gonna mix this properly. Okay, there we go. The butter is in the oven. Fully melted, I'll show you what that looks like. Do not grab a cast iron pan with your bare hand. That's a bad way to burn yourself. Well, it's a good way to burn. Burning yourself is bad. How's that? So I have this pan. I have the beautiful milk solids up there. Um, 
I'm going to reintroduce the pan to the oven right after the batter is ready because I want to pour the batter into the pan that's uh, nice and hot. But because the batter isn't ready just yet, I don't want to risk burning the butter. So I'm going to leave the butter just off to the side just for a minute. Hope I explained that well. Uh, Here's our milk and flour. If you make a really thin pancake, uh, it's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. If you go for a thicker pancake in the oven, Going to scrape down the side. It can take upwards of half an hour to cook. I'm going to do this in two steps. So I'm not going to pour the full amount of batter into the cast iron pan. I'm just going to pour uh, something just under a uh, half an inch. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's going to be about the perfect amount. So it's going to puff up. The sides will pull away from the cast iron pan. It's going to be nice and crispy on the outside, floofy and uh, creamy on the inside. I just want to make sure that there aren't any lumps in here. Okay. Pan goes back in the oven. And now, I'll have to figure out the best and safest way to transfer things over. I think it's with this measuring cup while holding onto the cast iron pan, and hopefully, I don't hurt myself. over here. <clears throat> yeah, kitty cat, the brown scrambled eggs. Butter is kind of tricky to fry things in. It's, um, what I recommend is right before you go to cook your things in the butter, heat the pan without the butter throw your bit of butter in and as soon as it starts sizzling throw your food on top of it. You can quickly swirl the butter around but don't bring the butter up to its smoke point. Like if you heat butter by itself on a pan on medium it'll burn. It'll get to its smoke point it'll start turning brown. <clears throat> like this is about as hot as you can get butter. And you don't want to go any hotter than that. Um, this pan might actually be big enough, town big enough for the both of us. You know what? I think it is. And here I was all worried that this pan was too small for this batch. perfect amount. Okay, <clears throat> so just so you see what's happening here, the whole batch into the oven, which is at 400 in a few seconds, ready for it to go beep. As soon as the pancake gets to a golden brown especially when the edges puff up and curl over it's cooked it needs to be golden brown it's gonna be anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes start paying attention after 15 so yeah as far as butter goes uh, you can fry things in the butter as long as it's in contact with the food that you're cooking if you're just 
if you leave the butter alone, yeah, like you said, if you leave the butter alone too long in your pan, even on medium heat, it will burn. It will hit its smoke point. Butter has a surprisingly low smoke point. But here's the trick. The way to fix that, the way to prevent that from happening, is to clear is to clarify your butter. If you heat up your butter and skim, like in, in, a, in a pot, and skim the milk solids that form, that, that rise to the top, just keep skimming them off, what you're left with is called clarified butter, or ghee, G-H-E-E. -E. That has a much higher smoke point. Yeah, so it still tastes like butter, it works like butter, it doesn't burn like butter. And that's a uh, cool trick number, I don't know, three of the day, maybe two, five, I, don't know. I, I lost track. What am I, a mathematician? And for the, the new viewers, I, I am actually, that's it's, it's what I do. <laughs> One of the tricks to pancakes, I think we are going to get to making some real pancakes. And I want to show you a couple of the things to watch for, um, just in case I don't mention this, and I'm pretty sure I will mention it. Right, you heat up the pan, and this is all relevant. Uh, thanks, kitty cat. You heat up your pan, you quickly throw in your butter, you swirl it around, and you drop your batter onto it. Between swirling the butter around and dropping your batter, if you think you have too much butter, if you're at all worried that it's going to have too much butter and burn, wipe some of it off. You just want a really, really thin layer of butter on your pan, even if it's a non-stick pan. A really thin layer of butter. You don't want your pancakes to be swimming in butter, which is counterintuitive because you want buttery pancakes. But you don't want to fry them in butter because frying butter tends to burn. And between pancakes paper towel, I'm, and I am should be kind of notorious for going through a lot of this stuff, I'll wipe my pan down. Make sure it's clean, make sure it's warm, hot-ish, throw on a pad of butter, melt it. If I think there's too much, take some out, put my pre-measured amount of batter into the frying pan, lather, rinse, repeat. I need to mute the microphone for just a minute. I need to, uh, uh, Crayon, I'm going to make thick, fluffy pancakes. <clears throat> the crepe ones are just uh, more liquid, so you can have uh, more egg. You need the egg for the strength, like the proteins in the egg are the, the real secret to making really thin crepes. But as far as big, thick, fluffy pancakes, you want your leavening agent and you want your flour in there for the structure and a bit of egg. Yeah, if you want something super thin, uh, big flat surface, more protein, more liquid, less dry stuff. Just so it can pour thinner and roll, it just covers the sheet. You have a nice thin layer, you don't want it to be puffing up. And then you very carefully get underneath it, or if you have a properly nonstick pan, you can just swirl it around and either flip it the dangerous way or you can get your spatula get underneath just very carefully flip it over eggs are really cool for the protein and the uh, the structure that it gives Like I'll give you an example. Um, a normal pancake recipe is about one egg per cup of flour and crepes, I just did a quick search, is like two to three eggs per cup of flour. You'll find different recipes, um, but a lot of it just has to do with more uh, more liquid and you just want something runnier that's gonna spread across uh, your hot surface faster and, and more evenly. You need something more liquidy. And just adding more milk is not the way to make it uh, stay together. Because if you just have milk poured in your pan, 
it's it, it's not gonna form into a solid. It's gonna stay liquid till it burns off. So I take a quick peek. I'm not opening the oven. So I take a quick peek at what's happening in there. Good. So I put 15 minutes on the clock. I have 10 minutes left. Um, yeah, you know, if I was set up for it, I would fire up words on stream, but uh, I'm not. I know, poop. Unless you guys want to play words on stream, I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. Adding it. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, keep in mind that the majority of an egg is liquid. The majority of an egg white is water. And uh, just the egg will thicken things up because it's obviously thicker than water. But it's still there's still a bunch of liquid in there. Uh, you can also add more fat to thin things out. But the egg itself, when you heat it, uh, becomes solid. So... Yeah, I think I've uh, think I've exhausted that topic. I'm gonna mute the microphone for just a minute. I will be right back. And we're back. Uh, I have a question. One and a half. I think I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I think I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use the waffle batter. I'm going to make the minor change uh, between the two recipes. I'm just going to recycle some of that stuff. And then I'm going to make some honest to goodness caramel because I think I have time to do both. But I don't have time to mix up. Well, you tell me. Do you want me to follow the specific recipe for making the pancakes as listed? Do you want me to adjust the German waffle mix into the regular pancake mix recipe? Show you a few pancakes on the stovetop and then make some caramel or do it properly without caramel? Too many choices. Too many choices. Do you want caramel or no? <laughs> yes. Caramel with cheating on the pancakes? or no caramel and legit pancakes. Like, share, and subscribe. I mean, comment below. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I'm going to. I will do... Small little nonstick pan. I'm going to get a tiny amount of butter ready. I 
I still have five minutes left on that. So I'm going to get some of this batter ready. <clears throat> Okay, let's quickly do some arithmetic over here. Uh, booyah. Versus. same uh, the butter Yeah, remind me to add the sugar to the German pancakes. Right. Thank you. Ah, oh, flour. OK. So the German waffle has more egg lots more butter, a bit more milk, and a bit more flour. So to fix that, I need to add a bit of flour to fix the ratio. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to add some more flour. Easy peasy. Okay. So that's going to make two. What's really funny is uh, this batter very, very much reminds me uh, of an unsweetened cake batter. Probably because that's literally exactly, I, like literally, literally exactly what it is. Okay. So this is a little bit of eyeballing. I'm pretty sure that this is going to make exactly what we want. I'm going to need to add a little more liquid to this, just because I know this is dried up. concerned about is that this batter has sat in liquid for long enough to have gluten form which I think has happened autolyze that is the process by which flour left in water the proteins will break apart and uh, reform in a stronger version including gluten and that's the hack the hack to get your flour to uh, your dough to knead itself. Knead with a K, not just an N. <clears throat> okay. 
the reason why I'm still on the fence about doing that in general is because you end up with a wetter dough. It's less physical work to do the, the manual kneading. The end result is way silkier smooth dough. I don't think that it really saves any time. The pancake is almost ready. You know what, I'll show you what it looks like right now, and then we'll get started on the regular pancakes. This still needs a couple of minutes, but probably a little bit too much butter in this pan. No such thing. I'm just going to pour this off to the side. Yeah, nice and fluffy. It's starting to pull away from the sides. Um, Yeah, uh, sweetened Yorkshire pudding, that's that's a good way to put it. It's a good way to put it. Surprisingly good way to put it. Thank you. I'm going to heat up this pan on medium until I'm convinced that it's nice and warm. And then, once it's sufficiently warm... Oh, uh, I didn't make any whipped cream. I know. I don't think I'm going. I might not today. Yeah, yeah I, th I think caramel is the thing that needs to be made today. Just because I get to play with burning hot things because I do have a fire extinguisher. Thanks again. <clears throat> Once the pan is nice and warm, I'm going to introduce some butter to it. And then I'm going to get my measurement and take it from there. I'm a little concerned that this batter is a little too worked in, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna find out what happens. We're gonna find out. Again, I can tell that there's a lot of gluten forming in here, so this is gonna be a lot more bread-like than it is cake-like because of the formation of the gluten. But uh, you know, oh darn. You get what you pay for, right? I don't even know what that means. Nice and hot. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, this butter is uh, sizzling. So I'm just going to let this butter coat. I'm going to turn the frying pan down to medium, medium low. Now that's far too much butter. Again, no such thing. Except for it's going to fry and uh, make a bit of a mess. So what I'm going to do is grab a piece of paper towel. I just want a really thin layer, just a little bit. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to rotate the camera over, so hang tight while I rotate this.
штука. So I have my one quarter cup. I'm going to start in the middle and just slowly work in a circle. And in theory, this batter is a lot runnier. Okay, I'm going to need to add a little more liquid to this. So I want the sides to be brown, I want uh, it to be fairly crisp, the inside is going to puff up and then sink down at some point, but uh, we'll know when it's cooked. about the ASMR noise. When we start to see the bubbles forming, we're getting little bubbles in here. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. Uh, once it's golden brown on the bottom and we have the bubbles, that's when it's time to flip it over. And when we flip it, we just gently get our spatula underneath. And it's, you don't get your whole arm in behind the motion. It's just very gentle, like, like a little spoon, like a little a delicate implement here. Get it in and just a little wrist action. Flip it over. ready yet.
straight from Germany, German pancake. Um, I can still see that the uh, butter is sizzling between the pancake and the pan. It's kind of funny. This is not cooking the way a regular pancake does. I think I'm gonna have to do a. I'm gonna have to take a do-over on this pancake. Yeah, the batter was way too thin. Yeah, the German the German waffle batter was a. Uh, I think that the liquid was soaking in the the flour was soaking the liquid a little too long for me to pull this off. So we're going to pretend that I didn't do this, and I'm just going to get back to making caramel. Yeah, normal. <clears throat> yeah, normally, normally the the pancakes get cooked at a slightly higher temperature. I wanted to do this one at um like uh, just around a medium because of the butter because I didn't want to risk it uh browning. But it's uh, I think this was a little too low, and I need to get my oven recalibrated. Yeah, like this side is a lot darker than this. I think it's because this side of the element. Yeah, and when I flipped it over this side, this side of my element seems to be a lot hotter than the other. Huh. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, the only way to redeem myself at this point is to make some caramel. This is going into the, uh, the garbage matic I'm going to do a small batch of uh, the caramel. I'm just going to quickly clean out my other pot here. something funny. Yeah, mouse work. Yes, kitty cat, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I, uh, I got a little too, uh, a little too fancy and uh, I look like a chump for doing it. Thanks for, thanks for drawing attention to that. <laughs> the, so realistically, the, the, the German the waffle batter had one more egg, an extra cup of butter, more flour, and more milk. Like the proportions weren't really close enough. I was hoping that I could just add a bunch more flour to uh, to thicken it up to more of the consistency of a pancake, but the flour in the German waffle mix had already been sitting in liquid for long enough that it, it felt to me that gluten was already forming. So it was kind of a fool's errand to, to try to do that. If I was doing both at the same time, I could have used the same base and transferred some over. Um, if you make pancake batter in advance, you'll see that it kind of puffs up. Uh, even if you leave it in your fridge, it'll puff up because of the, the baking powder. And then it doesn't quite pour or mix uh, like it does when it's fresh. Some people prefer doing it that way, <clears throat> just so that it's a lot more consistent. 
between the first batch of, of uh, pancakes you make and the ones later because you've already let the baking powder do its thing. Um, personally, I'm not a fan, but I do know uh, commercially a, a lot of restaurants will do it that way. <clears throat> or they'll just use a pre-mixed uh, powder, add water, and they're done. So we want to do real caramel. I'm going to take one half cup of sugar. We all know one half cup is two quarters. So half a cup of sugar. I want to put in just enough water to dissolve the sugar. So here we have, give or take, uh, two or three tablespoons of water. This part doesn't need to be precise. I just want enough water to dissolve the sugar. I'm going to be boiling off the water anyways. And I'm going to turn the temperature on the stove to high. I'm going to put another tablespoon of water in here. I want this to be more runny than just slightly dissolved. Okay, so this is a lot more liquidy, it's a lot more runny. And from here, we leave it on full heat. On Kitty Cat, like this this pancake over here, if I if I kept cooking it, it'd be it'd be completely fine. Like this is a pancake, it's you know, it didn't puff up the way I wanted to because the batter was too thin. Um, I'm sure it'll make a perfectly serviceable pancake at some point. Um, if I was eating carbs, I'd probably eat it right now, but uh, otherwise it's heading off to garbage land. The German pancake, now that it's deflated a little, looks a lot more like the traditional. Nice crisp outside, nice fluffy inside. Yeah, so I mean... In your face failure. <laughs> okay, so the water in here, <clears throat> I need to keep whisking this up. And I don't want anything to burn. And as soon as it starts to bubble, keep in mind that this sugar is going to go way above boiling temperature. So I want to get my other ingredients ready. And the other ingredients are some butter and some cream. And what I don't want is for that to burn on me. So I'm going to need about a quarter cup of butter. Okay, so the sugar is starting to boil. The water is starting to boil. I don't have my ingredients ready because shame on me. So I'm going to take it off the heat and very quickly get my butter ready. I need about a quarter cup. This is exactly about a quarter cup of butter. I need an eighth of a cup of cream. So that's ready to go. Okay, so from here on, it's boiling. I need to whisk this and keep whisking it. And I don't stop until... Well, I just don't stop. <clears throat> Unlike the... the the bard said, never stop, never stopping. Once the water is fully boiled away, all that's going to be left is the, the melted sugar. And that's why I dissolved the sugar in the water in the first place. So this step is a lot easier to do. And it's uh, 
If you're paying attention, you're not going to burn the sugar because you're slowly bringing everything up to temperature and then you're adding, you're getting rid of the water so all that's left over, the precipitate, if you will, is the melted sugar. And then once the sugar starts getting through that Maillard reaction, it's going to start caramelizing and that's where we're going to see the beautiful color happen. And then when we add the butter and the cream, uh, it's going to froth up like crazy. So that's the part where we have to be a little careful. Make sure that our hands are far away from super hot sugar because we don't want to burn ourselves. You can see the color is starting to change just a little bit. So it's going to go from clear to a little honey golden brown to really dark in a hurry. But I don't want it to turn too dark. I want it to be a caramel color. I don't want it to be uh, like a mocha color. This color is way too dark. I want it more in line with like, this color. It's starting to change color. It's starting to froth up a little more. It's getting a little thicker, and that's because I believe all that's left here is the, uh, is the sugar. Be extra careful when you're dealing with melted molten, moltenized sugar. It's very hot. see that it's starting to change color a little more. It's getting a little darker. A few more shades and I'm going to be removing it from the heat. Um, and stirring everything in. Once it's stirred in, you can, you can return it to the heat to make the color a little darker, but we're just going to stick with uh, adding the butter and the cream, whisking it up and whisking, whisking, whisking until everything's fully incorporated. And then our caramel sauce is going to be done. Very quickly get this butter ready to release. It's turning a little more amber. It's smelling really good. Okay, here we go. Goes off. Splattering happens when we add our cream. And we do not stop. We do not stop whisking. Don't stop. Never stop. Now, for anyone that's over at my place, this vanilla infused heavy whipping cream, caramel, smells wicked awesome. Okay, so right about now I can take it off of the turned off element and just keep whisking it up until it stops bubbling. then it's ready to pour. <clears throat> this is a few shades lighter than the, uh, the last one I made. A little gun shy about making it too dark. Because I thought the last batch I made was borderline burnt. And I'm using different butter than last time. Okay. 
as long as there's a color change in the sugar, any color change, uh, you're going to get that, that rich, uh, almost smoky caramel flavor coming through. Nice and smooth. And from here, it's done. I could add some flavor extract if I really wanted. If I wanted this to become darker, I could return it to heat and uh, cook it a little more, but I kind of like that. It's a, it's a nice, mild color. I'll show you how thick that gets. I just dip the fork into it and you can see that it's, uh, it's really sticking to the fork and it cools down fairly quickly. You can see these little pearl-like balls on the end. If I flip it upside down they're not uh, realigning themselves too quickly. But I'm going to get my laser thermometer. 215 Fahrenheit so it's still hotter than boiling water. So do not do this and stick it in your mouth, doesn't matter how cool it looks, because you'll burn yourself. So don't do that. <laughs> Rawhide, yeah. I want to see what this looks like on screen, because I actually haven't seen... going to rotate the camera down because I think we're just about done because it's exactly seven o'clock and Sudeep is uh you're ready you're mostly ready so turn the camera okay first things first here's the caramel sauce You can get a, you can hear that scraping sound from the top. That's where the sugar uh, is sticking to the top of the, the bowl, the pot here. But the bottom where I was whisking and pressing down, it's nice and smooth. And this is going to stay smooth like this for a long time. At room temperature, uh, I could dip fruit into this till tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to do one more thing, and then, uh, and then Sudeep can take over. I have this. Now, with any luck, I can get all the way around. I think I'm going to need my uh, fancy spatula to really get underneath yeah I wanted to transfer the German pancake to a plate give me a few seconds it's almost there Okay, so hopefully this is ready. Pizza, and not a whole lot left on the bottom. Pizza, pizza. Yeah, normally we, we have some, 
fruit on top we have some sliced apple especially it's very traditional so uh, in lieu of sliced apple we're gonna just drown this in syrup and caramel let this cool down a bit and just let all of this beautiful syrupy stuff just soak in Yeah, this has got all the carbs in it. Beautiful. Yeah, we got all sorts of caramel in there. I could throw a bit more on if I, I don't know if it needs it. But I said something about strawberries. I do happen to have a strawberry. Sudeep, last thing for reals. Hack number 12 of the day. <clears throat> we have a straw berry. Unfortunately, the straw has been used a few times, but if you push the straw through the straw berry, mind freaking blown. Kablooey. Strawberry. Strawberry is wet from the uh, water that I just washed it in, but you can see just how nicely and how crazy thick that caramel is. Let's pretend this is going to sit upright by itself. I so want to lick this. <laughs> You only live once. Yep, that's nice. Yeah, this this stuff uh, will stay viscous, but I can dip a strawberry into this uh, easily till tonight, probably till tomorrow. That is what she said. Okay. Um, I think we're done. Thanks everyone for uh, hanging out. Thank you everyone for the uh, support. Thanks for some of you being 12 year olds on my behalf. I, I greatly appreciate it. If there's any requests, if there's anything, 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 any requests, uh, feel free to hit me up on my Discord. I'm just going to quickly throw the link in here. Twitch slash the, this guy. A bit of blatant self promotion. Oh, real Therina, thank you. So there's me at the twitchoverse.com. My Aboot has all of my links. Copy link. <clears throat> and there's my Discord. Feel free to, uh, to hang out at the Discord. Um, yeah, that's about it. Much love, Opa, Sudeep, it's all yours. Thanks again, Shock, for having me as part of the team. Uh, I, I did upload those files a little late. Whoopsie. And, uh, and that's it. Be excellent to each other. And uh, Opa. <laughs>